Oh, hey YouTube, I didn't see you there. I was just mending my guitar. Jack Channel. Hello YouTubes and welcome to my channel. My name is Jack Hill. Uh, today's vlog is going to be about communication in prison. Now, you might be able to notice that my voice is slightly deeper than usual. I wonder why that is. It's because it's winter and I've got a cold. So, uh, bear with me. I might cough. I'll try and cut it out if I can. So, communication in prison. Um, uh, basically, I want to talk about how people communicated uh, in prison and the different things that people said and, like, slang terms and that kind of thing. So, um, for the most part, as far as I could tell, the majority of communication was done visually, i.e. just with people looking at other people, look here, look there, sort of hand signals and that kind of thing. Uh, and now in part, you can imagine that's because the screws or prison officers, that's the same thing, just so, so people know, um, watching the cons whilst they're talking or whilst they're interacting or whilst they're doing everything. Um, so a lot of the communication inside prison needs to be... Um, What's the word? It needs to be subtle and secret. Um, and it needs to, you know, slip under the radar of other people, basically. Uh, like Cockney rhyming slang, apples and pears and Ruby Murray, all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, a lot of the um, like eye communication that people did, the looks that people did, uh, were very, very subtle. I mean, it, there was occasional like nods and very open things, or like that kind of thing of like, what are you doing? Um... <laughs> And uh, I I think in part it's because the they were being watched. Um, and I think it's also in part because a lot of the people in there have quite a local mentality of communication. So there are the a lot of them have very strong um, regional accents or you know regional dialects. Um, so they're used to communicating with other people, you know, peers of theirs, people from the same area and that kind of stuff. Um, so slang kind of develops on the back of that usually. Um, but the, the subtlety involved is partly because I think th there's a lot of criminals there, so they know that they need to be... I want to use the word subversive, but I don't think that's right. They, they need to be subtle and like under the radar um, and uh, slip things through as much as possible because as much as they can do that, it means that they'll... It kind of... It gives you more... Oh, I want to say more freedom... Or power, I'm not quite sure which. Um, but I guess it gives you, one, a bit more power because you have influence on different things um, out, outside of what the screws think you have. Um, also, it's it's simply communication with another human being, which all, I think all human beings crave. We all crave to just have some kind of contact with another human, whether it's just walking past them and sort of nodding or, you know, having a full-blown conversation or a relationship. Uh, we're very, very social creatures, so... Um, we try to interact with other people as much as possible, I guess. Um, now, uh, volume was something as well that I noticed. Uh, it seemed to be a sliding scale. Now, most people existed on both ends of the spectrum, i.e. they'd either be very, very quiet or very, very loud and brass. Uh, there, was, there was a small percentage of people who fit into the what I would call the normal category. I, I don't fit into that category. I fit into just constantly being loud all the time. Uh, no, I, I was I was quiet occasionally. I'd be a quiet, you know, neighbour, pad mate, um, uh, and, and neighbour to the people in the cells next to me and opposite me. I'd never put on ridiculously loud music or anything like that. Anyway, good enough topic. Um, yeah, people are people are uh, really like quite quiet at a lot of different points and then really loud. And they'd sometimes jump between those two. So they'd be having a conversation with them going, oh, what are you doing, mate? Oh, how's it going over there? And start screaming across the wing to other people. Uh, in part, I think that's I think that's almost a method a method of distraction so that screws go, Oh yeah, I can hear him I can hear him shouting there and then as soon as the volume drops down to him having a conversation, there's a, a moment of adjustment and them going, What are they talking about? I can't hear him, you know, that kind of thing. Um, right, uh, dialect slang. Slang! Slang is a good one. So, uh, let me think of a few examples of slang things. Uh, the obvious ones are shank slash shiv. Shiv was used more 
um, than Shank. Uh, no, you say shanked, he'd get shanked or shivved. I heard both a fair amount. Um, but that's uh, an improvised um, weapon, uh, like a stabbing implement that has been made somehow in prison. Uh, the most standard being a toothbrush, where you just get, I've got a toothbrush over there. <laughs> the most standard being, you get a toothbrush, knock the head off, and then whittle at the end until it's a sharp point. Um, another reason that I think the uh, getting rid of guitars uh, because of security issues, because you can use the strings to grot people, that was one of the reasons they used, I believe, um, is silly because uh, you could kill someone with your toothbrush. So are they going to take away your toothbrush? No. If anything, that's a more effective weapon as well. Uh, so, you know, that on that principle of the argument, it fell down a little bit. Anyway, uh, let me think of others. Plugging, I've mentioned before in a previous video. <laughs> Second shell thing, you know, sticking stuff up your ass to hide it. Uh, screws, as I've said, that's prison officers. Um, Nick is the prison. Oh, what Nick are you going to? What Nick have you been? That kind of thing. Pad is, I'm, uh, I'm not sure I've mentioned that. It's the cell. The cell that you're in is your pad. So that was the first thing that confused me, in fact, when I went to prison. Because I, I went out onto a wing and they said, oh, you're in pad uh, 21. And I went, what? Pa what do you mean? Uh, and he was like, cell cell 21. And I went, oh, right, okay. Which one's that? <laughs> and he was like, oh, it's that one there. It's got like tiny little numbers near it or something, you know. I have no idea what I was doing. So I was just like, can you just point it out to me, please? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, uh, shipped out is a good one. Like, oh, someone's getting shipped here or shipped out, and it just means um, you're being moved from one prison to another, or being kicked out um, from from the prison that you're in to another. You still say, oh, he's been he's been shipped out. Uh, oh, that guy got in a fight, so he got shipped out. That kind of thing. Um, <laughs> I heard this phrase, and for some reason I've written it down. I can smell the bacon on him uh, because I remember someone shouting. There was a there was a screw. There was a guy talking to a screw, and then the guy went over to a group of people. I think he was talking to the screw for a while, so people on the wing thought, "Oh, he's some kind of snitching, you know, screw lover, basically," um, and said, "Oh, I can smell the bacon. Like he's a pig, i.e., he's a police person." <laughs> just for anyone else who doesn't understand the slang, pig. Uh, but I just thought that was a, an amusing thing. He literally ran off going, I can smell the bacon! Maybe not quite as weird or camp as that, but um, you get the idea. Uh, nonce is one that people have probably heard as well. Uh, that's a phrase used for um, a, a sexual... What's the word? Sexual... Not sexual predator. Uh, sexual criminal. Someone who's done a crime... A sex crime, basically. Um, and I don't... I, I'm In some people's eyes and in some prisons I know rapists wait not rapists sorry uh, wife no rapists are, are put into the same boat as that and I know some people say not so I, I don't know the situation on that and I don't really care either <laughs> oh it's also the biggest insult that people can give you in prison that's what it seemed to be at least uh, if you kept insisting that someone was a nonce going oh he's a fucking nonce mate you're a nonce you, you kept insisting it insisting it it would either cause a fight or it would cause some some kind of explosion of tension, you know, social tension. Um, it, it just seemed to be the biggest insult, which, which I found interesting, um, from a social side at least, you know. Uh, it, it was kind of, even though they're inside a prison with nonces, um, they, a lot of prisoners considered that the worst possible thing. Murderers included, you know, lots and lots of people, different kinds of crimes included. Um, I mean, fair enough, whatever. That, that's for them to decide their own opinion about those kind of things, but I just find it peculiar or contradictory, I'm not quite sure. Uh, how outwitting someone can send them to rage? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, that's uh, if you make a joke. Like I was saying, if you make some kind of joke and... Well, I wasn't really, I wasn't really talking about a joke. When you call someone a nonce. If you did it in a joking way, that could cause someone to get really annoyed. But I'm talking about if you're having a conversation with someone and they're trying to best you linguistically, they're trying to sort of make you look a bit like a fool for the sake of a laugh, and, and you, do, you do it to them and you keep successfully doing it, it can cause some tension. And if that person's, you know, physically aggressive or a fighter, uh, he will just resort to that. He won't try and argue. He won't try and use his brain to it with you. He will simply just punch you in the face or take you down and try and shank you or whatever, you know. 
standard prison intimacy, let's say. Um, and communication between the screws and cons was quite interesting as well, um, because the screws tried to make it subtle when they were talking to anyone, because they know that it caused problems on the wing if someone's seen talking to a screw far too much, you know. I mean, I talked to screws. I, I don't mean like just walking past and saying, you're right, go, how's it going? Um, people won't start doing you in because of that. But if you constantly keep going all the social times, lots of different occasions, if you go to them and you don't, if you neglect hanging out with cons and hang out and try to hang out with screws a little bit more, that's when you'll cause real, real problems. Uh, but so the screws try and communicate very subtly with people. Well, not very subtly, but they try to be at least a little bit subtle and quiet. And um, they were quite cool, a lot of the guys that I talked to, a lot of the screws. And uh, a couple of them really helped me uh, get on in my prison sentence quite well. The, I mean, when I was first locked up, I think I've mentioned this before, but when I was first locked up, there was a police officer uh, in Wigan uh, Police Station who told me, he said, oh, I can tell you're an alright lad, or something like that, and you've just made a mistake, but um, be sure that you don't go under when you go in prison. And then he shut the door, and I was like, I think I know what that means, but I'm not 100%. And then when I got to prison, I real I understood what he means now. It's kind of people who... It's a really simplified version of, of events, but it really explains it quite well. It's when people get depressed and mentally unwell to the point where they're trying to ignore their current situation uh, or they're trying to ignore everything that's happening and just fighting to get to the end. Um, although I, I'm not sure I'd say fighting to get to the end they're kind of recluse into themselves um, uh, pe sometimes people sleep a lot or you know they avoid everyone don't really talk much and it's really really bad for you mentally um, I, I presume um, people making themselves really really solitary for a long period of time is uh, you know detrimental to your mental well-being I noticed that a couple of times when there was a few period the few weeks when I stayed in my pad after I had that fight or after I was involved in a fight um, at, pres at Christmas uh, and I stayed in my cell for a little bit after that. Well, I ventured out and got food and I, went, I kept going to work. I talked to people on the wing still, but at social times I just stay in my pad and read um, and occasionally go and talk to a few people, uh, a few friends and stuff, you know, but during that time I could feel myself going under, so to speak, uh, where, where, you know, you it feels unnatural to talk to people after that amount of time. It felt really strange. I was like, this doesn't feel flowing and natural like it used to, like now. Um, and uh, I thought, oh, okay, I need to stop this now. I'm just gonna crack on and just hang out with everyone, who cares? Um, and then I was much better after a while. But anyway, um, enough about me. I just thought I'd talk a little bit about communication in prison. Uh, if any of you have any questions, any follow-up questions, I'm happy to do another one on this um, because uh, I've had a couple of people asking me questions about this kind of thing. So if there are any questions, feel free to Twitter me at avpstudios09 or leave it in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, likes, comments, shares, subscribes, incredibly welcome, and I shall catch you all for another vlog. On the flip side, and I don't know why I paused for so long then. Bye, everybody. Love you.